Retired Lieutenant Colonel John Cope, he serves as country coordinator for Ukraine on behalf of Bomb Techs Without Borders. And he traveled to Ukraine from North Carolina to lend a hand. Uh, it's good to have you on, sir. Thanks so much for the work you're doing out there. Well, thank you very much, Dobry Renok. Good, good morning. Uh, you're watching a particular aspect of this war, right? And that is that is weapons left behind often. Well, mines won, uh, but also these cluster bombs that, that, that stay behind because not all of them explode on impact or they're designed to, to timed to explode later deliberately to target civilians. Based on what you've seen on the ground there, do you see evidence of war crimes in the use of these munitions? Uh, I personally cannot say that I have. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically what I've been working uh, is in the Cherniv and the Hostomel area. Uh, we've been clearing mainly a place where there was a, a very, uh, you know, huge battle fought uh, in the early days of the war at the Hostomel airport. Most of the stuff that we found is remains uh, from uh, munitions that exploded when the various Russian tanks and armored personnel carriers and other vehicles were destroyed. Mm. So okay, that's pretty so much conventional artillery and small arms. Got you, which, which retain danger after the fact. Do you, I mean, when you look at the pictures, there's, and by the way, we're showing some pictures of the work you were doing there, but, but given the scope, the scale of the battle, and the scale of the Russian forces that came in and the munitions they carried, are there enough people there, a combination of folks like you and Ukrainians to clear the areas, make it safe for civilians? We need more techs. Uh, we, we are working uh, with the Ukrainian National Police right now, which has the principal responsibility for clearing these liberated areas. And uh, we definitely need more technicians. Um, I'm actually trying to uh, develop a training course uh, with Bomb Techs Without Borders that will support the hire of new personnel into the National Police Technical Department, mm -hmm. uh, who obviously would not be trained as, uh, as bomb techs. Yeah. We're gonna try to run a couple of different courses uh, that will get them various levels of expertise for dealing with this uh, challenge. You know, you, you look at uh, previous war zones, Vietnam, Laos, for instance, the, 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 a lot of these weapons, decades later, pose a threat to civilians and take civilian lives and, and injured civilians. Do, does Ukraine face the same kind of future? Uh, very possibly. Now, my understanding is that uh, the Ukraine uh, or Ukraine plans to uh, get demining. Uh, you know, we're going to do the initial clearance, uh, remove uh, the explosives that we find. We have certain procedures to deal with very sensitive things like the cluster bombs. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to get those things out of the way. But there's, uh, and and we're dealing with mines. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. they're they're seeing lots of these little PMN four mines, which are about the size of a of a chicken pot pie, mm -hmm. and uh, they left they left them everywhere. Uh, now they didn't leave them very much at Hostomel because, like I said, they were overrun at Hostomel uh, early on, and they really didn't have much time to do more than hasty defensive networks. And of course, they didn't really pull out of Hostomel. They were destroyed at Hostomel. Now, when they leave those behind on retreat, what, what is the function of that? Is that to cover your retreat? Or, or is it deliberately intended to exact a price from the civilian population? Well, it kind of depends on where they are. I mean, if you see the farmer's field uh, with mines, that's just designed to mess with the civilians. I mean, that's what that's yeah. for. But it's certainly, there certainly are some legitimate military uses for, uh, for mines placed as you retreat to slow down pursuing forces and things like that. And sometimes they're laid right on the surface. I mean, you know, it's just you've still got to stop and deal with it even though you can see it. Yeah. So, uh, but buried mines uh, in farmers' fields, uh, cluster munitions used on civilian targets with no military value, um, there's no real good justification for that from a military standpoint. Let me ask you this, because again, we've been showing pictures of you and, and your teammates there picking this stuff up, right? Now, you're experts, but also as experts, you know the dangers. You're risking your life there as an American in Ukraine in this war. Uh, explain why. Tell us why you're willing to do it. Well, you know, I've, I've, I've thought about that a lot. Um, part of it is I feel like Ukraine is fighting the war uh, we were planning to fight 30 years ago. Um, you know, lots of my colleagues uh, were in Europe in the Fulda Gap preparing to meet the Russian attack. Mm. Um, it never came. But Ukraine is facing that right now with 
frankly, uh, the Russians using about the same weapons that they might have used 30 years ago. And um, that's one reason. Another reason I feel like, you know, this may sound a little weird, but it fe I feel like it's an elemental struggle of good against evil. I mean, the Ukrainians are trying to do the right thing. They have, they're a sovereign country. There's no reason in the world, there's no justification in the world why Vladimir Putin should invade a sovereign country on his border and, you know, murder thousands of civilians in the process. Yeah, as Ukrainians often say, they're, they're fighting this war for themselves and for us. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Culp, appreciate the work you're doing. I'm sure a lot of folks watching right now are appreciative as well. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the time.